Energy Island, How One Community Harnessed the Wind and Changed Their World, by Alan Drummond. Welcome to Energy Island. The real name of our island is Samso, but we like to call it Energy Island. Not too long ago, we were just ordinary people living on an ordinary island in the middle of Denmark. In many ways, Samso was, and still is, not very different from where you live. We have lots of fields and farms where farmers raise cows and sheep and grow crops like potatoes, peas, corn, and strawberries. And there is a harbor where the ferry and fishing boats come in. Our little home has recently become quite famous and scientists travel from all over the world just to talk to us and learn about what we've done. Why is that? Well, it's an interesting story. Let's go, hold on to your hats. Our island is in the middle of Denmark and it's in the middle of the sea. That's why it's always very windy here. Oops. In the summer, we have fun at the beach, and in the winter, we play games inside. We have villages and schools, kids play soccer, and grown-ups go to the grocery store. It's very ordinary here, apart from the wind. The way we used to use energy was very ordinary too. On dark winter nights, we switched on lots of lights and turned up our heaters to keep warm. We used hot water without even thinking. Our oil arrived by tanker ship and truck, and we used it to fill up our cars and our heating systems. And our electricity came from the mainland by cable under the sea. A few years ago, most of us didn't think much about where our energy came from or how it was made. That was before our island won a very unusual competition. The Danish Ministry of Environment and Energy chose Samso as the ideal place in Denmark to become independent of non-renewable energy. A teacher named Soren Hermansen was selected to lead the Energy Independence Project. He was a very ordinary person too. Okay, he did play bass guitar in a band, but his favorite subject was environmental studies, and he was very excited about energy independence. Tell me, class, what are some ways we can make our own energy right here on the island? Capture heat from the sun. Ride bicycles instead of driving cars. Use oil from crops. Burn straw and wood. Imagine if we really could make enough energy from the sun and our crops and even our own legs to power up the whole island. Then we wouldn't need the oil tankers to come here. We wouldn't have to worry about the world's oil running out. And we wouldn't need electricity to be sent from the mainland. Renewable resources are so much cleaner. And think of the money we'd save. We just need to think big. But do you think we can really create that much energy ourselves? Asked Naya. From just the sun, our crops, and our legs? Well, you know, said Catherine, if there's one thing our island has plenty of, it's wind. Maybe we should start with wind energy. That's a wonderful idea, said Mr. Hermanson. Who's with me? Hold on to your hats, we all said. We kids were very excited about all the new ideas, but as for the grown-ups, well, it took them a while to catch on. It will cost millions, said Jorgen Tronberg. All these cows keep me busy enough already. Heat from the sun, said Peter Paulin. Why would we bother with that? As long as I can keep my house warm and watch TV, I'm happy. I don't need change. Bicycles, said Mung Mahler. No way, I love my truck. Why us, said Dorth Knudsen. Let some other island take on the challenge. Renewable energy, said Jens Hansen. I'm too old for all that. Samso is just an ordinary kind of place, said Oli Jorgensen. What difference can we make to the world? Energy independence? In your dreams, said Petra Peterson. But Soren Hermansen wouldn't give up. He called lots of local meetings. There's energy all around us, he told the islanders. We just need to work together and think big to make the best use of it. Teach the children to do it. What if I built a small wind turbine for my family? We're just a little island. How can we make a difference? Brian, don't talk about small. You've got to think big. He talked to everyone, the soccer team, the farmers at the market, all the teachers, the police, the harbor master, the lighthouse keeper, the fishermen, the dentist. This went on for several years. People listened, and lots of them even agreed with what Soren Hermanson was saying. But nothing happened. Was anyone willing to make a change? Then one day, Brian Kier called Soren Hermanson. I'm thinking small, he said. I'd like to put up a second-hand wind turbine next to my house. Jorgen Tranberg was thinking big. 
I want a huge wind turbine. I'll invest my money and then sell the electricity it makes. Mr. Hermanson was excited. Two renewable energy projects had begun, one very small and one very big. Brian Kier called on his family and friends to help him put up his wind turbine. While it took a big ship, some giant trucks, and two enormous cranes to build Jorgen Tranbergs. The project on Samso had begun, but we were still using a lot of non-renewable energy. It looked like we might never achieve our dream, until one dark winter night, sleet and snow blasted across the island. Suddenly, all the electricity on the entire island went out. Everything was dark. Everything, that is, except Brian Kier's house. Free electricity, shouted Mr. Kier. My turbine works. Tonight, I'm energy independent. Sure enough, the blades on Mr. Kier's new turbine were whooshing and whirring in the wind. Hold on to your hats, cried Soren Hermanson. News travels fast on a small island like Samso. After that night, everyone was asking how they could make energy of their own. Suddenly, Soren Hermanson was busier than ever, helping people start new energy projects. The whole island got to work. Some people had big ideas, some people had small ones, but all of them were important in working toward our goal. The home family installed solar panels on their farm. Today their sheep are munching grass while the panels soak up energy from the sun. Ingvar Jorgensen built a biomass furnace. It burns straw instead of oil and now heats his house and his neighbor's houses too. In fact, biomass is so big on Samso that whole villages are now heated by burning wood and straw grown on the island. Eric Anderson makes tractor fuel oil from his canola crop. And Brian Kier's wife, Bettina, whizzes around in an electric car. Their windmill powers the batteries. Today, we even have electric bicycles charged by the power of the wind. Every one of us has an energy independence story, and that's why people all over the world want to hear the latest news from Energy Island. Let's see if Jorgen Tranberg will take us up the ladder to the very top of his fantastic wind turbine so we can see what Samso looks like today. As you can see, there's plenty going on. Now we have lots of wind turbines. Down there is Samso's brand new learning center, the Energy Academy, where kids and grown-ups from all over the world come to learn about what we've achieved and how to talk about new ideas for creating, sharing, and saving energy. Guess who the director of the Academy is? an extraordinary teacher named Soren Hermanson. Things have certainly changed on our little island in the past few years. We no longer need the oil tankers to bring us oil, and we don't need electricity from the mainland. In fact, on very windy days, we have so much power that we send our own electricity back through the cable under the sea for other people in Denmark to use. Samso may be a small island, but we have made a difference in the world. Reducing our carbon emissions by 140% in just 10 years, and we did it by working together. So that's how we got the name Energy Island. And what can you do to make a difference on your island? What's that? You say you don't live on an island? Well, maybe you think you don't live on an island, but you actually do. We all do. We're all islanders on the biggest island of them all, planet Earth. So it's up to us to figure out how to save it. There's renewable energy all around us. We just need to work together to make the best use of it. Hold, Hold on, on to your hats! And then I'll just have you start by saying your name and your age, and then I'll ask you the first question. I'm Ellie Alessio, I'm 12 years old, and I go to St. Augustine Catholic School. My name is Miley, and I'm 10 years old. My name's Mason, and I'm seven and a half. I'm Addie Alessio, I'm 12 years old, and I go to St. Augustine Catholic School. My name is Milo Johansson. I am nine. Yes, because, well, when we use like energy and like oil and stuff, it takes like sometimes like if for cars, pollution can happen and then that can kill like animals or like hurt like animals' habitat. So we don't waste it? Um, I think it's important so that like you're not depending on things to always come in so that you like know that you always like 
have the energies that you need. They had a whale coming in, and so they like started trying to like depend on like themselves rather than other people. I only think you should because you don't really pollute as much because of the coal plants. Well, we have solar panels and two electric cars. If we, you know, turn off the lights when we go out of a room and close the door so we don't use as much air conditioning or heating and do mostly stuff like that, it's more, definitely more, you don't use as much electricity. We could like bike to places or walk to places and like, if we went out to eat, we could order a bus. Um, instead of using a lot of lights, you could just open the windows. Instead of turning on your radio, you could just sing the song if you know it. You could bike a lot and walk places instead of using like a car. They're just like people who are living their normal like day lives, but then they like, you know, like work together to create their own energy. I think they're like, I think I was different from them because like, I feel like their everyday lives are like, they're kind of a little different from our everyday lives because they live on an island and they like do different things. That we should probably be more about energy island, like more like them. It's similar because it's just like normal people, like there's kids who go to school and adults that just like work and they drive their cars to work every morning and they take their kids to school and then the kids will just like come home and like play and so just like the morning. And then it's different because when they, well they started off just like us, like using cars and stuff, but it's different when they switched and they all started using like windmills and started using rene renewable resources and like I feel like we could change into that by helping our earth by doing the same thing that they did. I like wake up and I'll like um and turn off my fan and then turn on my lights and I'll like go downstairs and I'll be like get a drink from the fridge or like microwave my breakfast. Um, not having the TV on like as much or like when no one's watching it, turn it off. Or like when someone's not in like a room like to turn off like lights and walk to a lot of places. Can we turn on the lights in our house? Can we yeah. turn on the water? Cook? Yeah. 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 Get up in the morning, but I don't really turn on any lights at first because I need to let my eyes adjust to everything. And then I turn the lights on, so it's not as much use as when I just, I don't just flick it on. And then I play Minecraft and YouTube and stuff. Lighting candles or something to create light instead of turning on our light switches. Or maybe instead of using the dishwasher, I could like start like, I could like hand wash the dishes. Maybe because they wanted to keep their island how it was? Yeah, they didn't want to give up their cars and they didn't want to have to spend a lot of money on building stuff to do it and they're just some people are, were just like too lazy to think about it because it's a lot easier to just like drive your car or it's a lot easier to just like heat up your house or like turn your lights on but i would say that they, it was just so much easier for them and they didn't want to make a change they just wanted to keep everything how it was I've never thought of Iowa as an island, but like I understand that like we all live on like a one big one and that 
if we don't take care of it, you know, it's all just gonna like go to waste because we have to take care of like the stuff that we've been given. I think we could turn our like homes into better homes by like using like resources like how to get it or something. And I think it's like a good story and it's like like people should read it to like get an idea of what how they could like help change our I would tell them that it was a very good educational book about people who started using renewable energy and that I think people should definitely get solar panels uh, and more electric cars and then if you have solar panels you should get electric cars because it's easier to charge them. Thank you again for joining us for this first edition of Renewable Readers Junior. We hope to do another event like this in the future, so stay tuned for more updates and follow us on all of our social media at 100% Iowa and check out our website at 100percentiowa.com. Looking for a fun way to discover and share clean energy projects in your community this summer? Look no further. Throughout the month of August, learn alongside the 100% Iowa team with our Sustainability Scavenger Hunt. This app-based virtual game encourages players to submit real-time photos of sustainability initiatives they see both at home and around their community. Points will be given to players who successfully complete these missions and bonus points will be awarded to those with unique or creative entries. At the end of the month, the top 10 point earners will be entered for a chance to win a $100 gift card to REI. The game will begin on August 1st and run through the end of the month, so we look forward to having you join us for our first sustainability scavenger hunt from 100% Iowa. Stay tuned for more information and happy hunting!